What's going on, Skate? Hello, Ashley. All right, let's get into it. What's going on, Ashley? Hey, I'm just getting another another cup of coffee. How are you? I am pretty pretty good. Um, here, I'll talk about this since like we're just uh, chilling. So I'm in I'm in Cali. So I'm enjoying the dispensaries here. Oh, I'm so and, jealous. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's it's fun to even just walk in and walk around, you know, kind of hang out. So. Just a little bit of that, but mostly just been, you know, on spaces, doing the grind and looking forward to got three hours of spaces here and then going out to an event in Hollywood. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So we're rolling. All right. Let me shoot out a couple of invites here. Uh, I think uh, Abbas is coming on and Chad and some others. Oh, look at that. Abbas changed his profile picture. Did you see that? Who did? NFT Millionaire. It's the... Uh, oh, I had to check. The username. All right. So this one's going to be with our Winman team. So let me go ahead and retweet oh. as well. All right. All right. Ashley, what's, uh, what's, what's new in the world of NFTs while we're waiting here? What's been going on? I feel like you're very well versed with the ecosystem. Oh, man, <laughs> it's just a lot of drama because um, I've been really into like soul NFTs lately, um, I guess, because, you know, I, I don't know, I'm just kind of trying to get both into ETH and soul. And there's been so much drama around the OK Bears, like uh, with all the derivatives and specifically the not OK Bears that um, there's like some influencer from the ETH um side that has bought the not okay bears and is trying to like push it even harder even though it's like a literal copy paste of the original okay bears project so it's been fun uh listening to the spaces on that and then um they found out a soul project uh reptilian brigade or something um rugged and then they're exposing the Hydra platform as a rug. So it's it's a fantastic day <laughs> in the world of NFTs. Pretty wild. So are you team uh, OK Bears or not OK Bears? I'm team OK Bears solely because um, I don't I don't agree with what um, what basically like the not OK Bears are doing. Um, I think that, I mean, one, they literally copied and pasted the project and two, they are only there because they're mad that a soul project was doing better than some ETH projects. So it just feels like a lot of saltiness coming out of nowhere. I hear you. I hear you. I appreciate you filling me in on it. Drew, what's going on, man? Hey, how's it going? I hope everyone's having a great day so far. Absolutely. Beautiful day here in California. How about you? Yeah, I can't complain. Another day. Uh, we all woke up breathing healthy, so can't complain at all. For sure, for sure. Uh, do you know if Quigley and uh, Zorfix are popping in? They will. They'll be a little late. They're going to make their way up in here. Sounds good. Okay, perfect. All right, I see Abbas. You're in the crowd as well. If you want to pop up. And Blake, what's going on, man? Yo, GM, how you doing in in uh, California, man? Enjoying the weather? It's been great. Yeah, living the dream. Although <laughs> last night, kind of wild, first time it's ever happened to me since I've uh, turned twenty one a few years ago. Uh, some some bar tried to take away my ID, and I was like, "What? Wow, what the hell? dude! I had no idea how to react wow. to it. It's never happened to me." And I just had this huge adrenaline rush, and I was just like, "I need to just come out like." in a way that like somebody who is not, you know, if they're, if they weren't legal, they wouldn't go like this. And I came up, up to him. I was like, all right, man, I'll call the cops right now. I was like, let's call the cops. Let's have them settle this. They can tell you whether my ID's fake or not. And immediately the guy's face was just like, oh shit. But he still tried to stay on his ground for like five minutes and tried to like, he was trying to like bend my ID to break it. I was like, dude, I need that for a flight in three days. I'm suing this place if you break that ID. And so he was just like, clearly just like, oh, okay, okay. And then he's like, I need another form of identification. So I showed a picture of my vaccine card that has my uh my date from the baltimore state of maryland which would have been way easier to fake than an id and he accepted that as a 
identification. So quite the, quite the time. Wow. Yeah. When I was, when I was younger, uh, I was actually visiting one of my brothers in California and, uh, one of my other brothers who's close in age to me, who happened to be over 21. And I wasn't at the time. Uh, he, he gave me his ID card, uh, and would, would also give me a credit card of his in case they would ask me for another form of ID. And like, it, it always works seamlessly except this one bar, uh, in, in California. And the guy was, he was testing me, asked me the address. Uh, I had to remember that. <laughs> then he asked for another form of ID. Luckily I had, you know, my, my brother's credit card on me. Uh, but yeah, man, he still is just like, I don't know about this, but you got the dude's credit card. So I guess I'm going to let you win. There you go, man. All right. Enough about my times, uh, in California. Let's hop into some NFT talk. We've got, uh, Blake and Ashley here and Abbas as speakers. You guys had Abbas as well. You doing good, Abbas? Hey, hey guys. All good. All good. Loving the profile picture. Thank you. That's me. (laughs) There we go. Now we, now we know the face. We can put the face to it. I love it. Thank you. Absolutely. Welcome on. So, okay. So we're here back with the women team. We've got Quigley and Drew. Uh, we're talking today about kind of what it takes to launch the NFT projects. We're going to kind of also co- talk a little about, you know, the current environment of NFTs and also a little sneak peek ahead the next week, maybe um, on some things coming out with the women team. All right, Quigley, we got you in here. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Excited to be here again. Uh, Another uh, lovely episode with uh, with you, Wolf. So, yeah, let's uh, looking forward to the conversation. Absolutely. So, I'm going to go ahead and just put out one more tweet, just let everybody know that we're live. If all the speakers and whoever are able to go ahead and share that one, would love to get your audiences into here. Uh, but let's start without with digging it out. So, Drew, we were chatting a little bit about this topic. Um, you want to start us out here with a little bit on you know what it takes and how to and kind of where you wanted to go with that direction. Yeah, yeah. So just to kind of introduce myself and give you all some background, my name is Drew. I'm one of the co-founders for WinMint. Um, and what WinMint is, is it's pretty much a, a generative platform to launch a project. So we uh, we pretty much have everything automated to where you'll go ahead and deploy a, a smart contract, minting form, metadata, API, um, an automated kind of pre-sale whitelisting bot, a Discord security audit, and just, you know, a ton of just, you know, mentorship and advice that we offer. Um, since we've launched over 40 projects so far and pretty much we really provide everything A to Z and you know in this current kind of uh, NFT environment you know it really it really takes a lot it takes a lot to launch a project right Um, you know back in the day and when I say back in the day what about probably uh, a year ago now uh, we could all go to Rarity Tools we could just look at the front page and see what projects are launching for the next three days and now we go on Rarity Tools and you know, I'm still scrolling for five minutes and, you know, I'm seeing all the projects that has launched yesterday, right? So, you know, there's a lot that goes into helping your project stand out. First of all, you know, deciding what is your project? What's the purpose? You know, uh, you know, are you here to make a quick buck? You know, are you trying to provide some Web3 utility that, you know, users can benefit in real life? Are you trying to establish a brand or, or you know, kind of really all the above? And, and there's just so much that goes into it with, you know, first starting off, you know, what kind of smart contract do you want to go with? You know, what mainnet do you want to deploy on? You know, uh, Asher was kind of talking about, you know, okay, bears and, and, you know, the kind of uh, the big rendition to, to soul, right. Kind of, kind of popped up soul a little bit. Um, so, you know, soul, ETH, any other main nets and, and there's just so much more to it, but yeah, just kind of give some, some background there. Perfect. Yeah. Great start with the background there. Um, just to note to everybody, went ahead and pinned it up top. There was a pin tweet in the space. If anybody was able to retweet that or tweet out that we are live now, that would be fantastic. Appreciate y'all. Okay. Quigley, um, I want to kind of pull it to you if you want to bounce off of Drew there and, you know, maybe roll with a similar introduction. Anything else you want to add on to it? Yeah, I'm Quigley. Uh, my name's actually Rob and uh, one of the co-founders. And, you know, the, the, what, what Drew was saying, I mean, what we offer from, from a Launchpad perspective, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of, um, you know, sort of almost end-to-end sort of solutions out there uh, for Web3. And, you know, our our whole concept here is just trying to make it as easy and frictionless as possible for uh, for these founders. And it's not just founders. I was, I was just thinking about this today. I mean, really, um, this is a team sport, right? So, I mean, you have your founder, your co-founders, you have your artists. 
this, you have your devs. I mean, you can have a full, you know, there's just so much. I mean, I, I think we can kind of have a little, go, you know, go around and have a discussion. on Fill any gaps and answer any questions you guys have. Okay, perfect. So the beauty to it is we actually have a bunch of founders here tonight. Um, and I think that, you know, we can talk a little bit about the tools, I think, that go into it and where to get those tools, perhaps, um, is a good place to start. Drew, would that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great place to start, get perspective from both sides. Okay, perfect. So, Ashley, I'd love to go to you first. You know, you've launched a couple of projects and maybe to talk through some of the, the key components that went into that. And I think that that would just be very helpful for anyone trying to think about, like, where do I even start? You know, how do I get off the floor? Um, thank you for um, having me here. So, um, so this space is it's constantly changing. So I have two projects. The first one is called Cryptid Cities. It's very fun, crazy. Um, I um, made and sold it uh, around August to October of last year. Um, that was kind of like one of my more, um, like it started off as a joke and it ended up becoming something really cool. Um, I was able to donate to breast cancer using that. So I wanted to do something similar with my next project that was a lot more serious. Um, now the biggest piece of advice that I have, because, um, you know, in this space, I, I'm kind of starting to understand when, uh, you meant something is kind of like how, it will like basically how successful it would be. It will translate to that. So um, you've got to really time out your NFT project. Like if you're minting in a bear market and you're not one of these overhyped um, projects, you're probably not going to mint out like it, like you were hoping. Um, so, you know, you've got to time it out really well. You've got to build that organic community. And that is actually much harder um, than you'd think. So before you even come up with your project, um, I highly recommend seeing like, you know, what the market sentiment is, what people are doing, uh, what kind of projects, like what kind of style of projects um, are working in the market. Because if you notice in the market, even though the art is different, a lot of the style is very similar. Like a lot of the look and feel is very similar. So there's so much that goes into launching a project that you have to be ready to not only have, you know, amazing art and an amazing team behind you, but you really need to um, be flexible on what you're doing, like flexible on when you mint, flexible on, you know, just basically like utility and things like that, because um, you have to constantly be changing. Um, it's such a fast moving space. Something that would have minted two days ago won't mint today. Um, so just my biggest piece of advice is to be careful and to do a ton of research on the market before you ever come up with your project. Great points. Great points all around there. Uh, especially just how quickly it can change, right? It's like, it's like the weather in the Northeast. Like you don't like it, you know, wait 15 minutes. This space is moving so quickly and it's moving massive amounts of money as well, which is what makes it so exciting, right? To pay attention to, um, even though it can often be high ups and high downs. Great points. Okay, uh, Abbas, we'd love to come to you. If you kind of want to echo, you know, similar sentiments or anything around, you know, what um, the direction we're actually saying when it came to your, your project, which you launched. Well, first I want to echo what, what everything uh, Ashley said and, uh, you know, like uh, we've been into the project. I've been into the project. This is my my second project, like the biggest one between like the first one and the second one. This is the biggest one. But the the thing that for for technical side of of building the project, it's um, actually just give me a second. I have to yeah, just a second. Thank you, buddy. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So. I was I was in a, in an extensive meeting in this week with the entire team, which like we're building into the marketing branch and within the project that we have. So it is in from the technical from the technical side we have we have five devs we have uh, two web designers and 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 we're adding a lot of like you know metaverse developers and beside that we started opening the 
the marketing within the project itself. So trying to build it within the the, the project. The thing that that we have been looking at it's it's we focused a lot on the technical side of the project from like delivering the utilities and and building the the entire infrastructure if you can tell like about the staking we opened it within seven days from launching the to the gpus minting and the staking as well we're working on the mapping but there is a really great and important component that we actually you know as as a creators we didn't pay that much attention in it which is the story of the project like not the 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 kind of what the project is providing but what is the what is the project culture in a way it's like you know because we are in in we have a mafia and a mob kind of of structure but we we was like you know we were working on the side of the tech side of it and and the story storytelling was not like you know as active as we wanted so this is the part that we focus on and as as ashley said it's a lot of component re, uh, related to it if you focus a lot on this you might miss that so the most important thing in my opinion is is the balancing between the uh creating the culture building the community and at the same time delivering on your promises and 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 utilities as well and i'm going to tell you what it's not freaking easy it's just as 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 hard as you can imagine it's if anyone tells you like having projects within two to three weeks and you go and just like you know be successful uh it's it's not an issue it's it's it's, it's nothing it's it's a lie it's it's a lie if you want to build it and 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 actually have a great utilities and at the same time build the culture and there is a huge thing about building the culture the thing that you you know like and Drew, you have your uh, pfp uh, uh i think this is the remind us i just forgot the name uh dead fellas dead fellas sorry so what you have it as your pfp you, you you like the culture of it? You like the concept, the story, and the community of it? Oh yeah, yeah. I think the the community. I think Betty and Psych, if y'all aren't familiar, they they you know they're kind of paving the way for their their brand that they're establishing. Right? They started off as kind of a motive of a you know 10k PFP, but you know then they really started to to establish their global brand. Right? So yeah, so you know representing so the, the PFP, idea. I think, kind of ties back to what you're saying. Yeah, so Quigley uh, is doing the same. Blake with the with the with the punk at, at the same time, and this is the thing that we need we need to actually. And we started extensively. Thank you. We have four people graduated from the best college uh, uh, in 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 Lebanon who's working on it. And this is the thing that we need to build within the project because our project was more business oriented project than it is like you know kind of like combine projects i'm sorry i'm not not trying to actually take take that into but i think balancing between the culture and the tech is really 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 important it's really important and this is i'm saying i'm, I'm saying that based on, on on real experience that we are in it now Yeah, I think that's uh that, that that's a good point too, right? Because you know, kind of what Ashley was saying is, you know, you really got to start off with finding your direction, right? Like, like what are you trying to establish? Are you trying to establish a brand? Are you trying to establish, you know, just kind of a, almost a placeholder for staking? Are you actually trying to, you know, build something that that will mutate? Is it is it going to be a PFP? Is it not supposed to be a PFP? Is it is it contemporary art where it's more of a one on one style? And you know, really kind of falls on how you present your project and how you word it for those people that you're going to attract as your community members, right? AKA like your target audience. And, you know, sure. again, like Ash was saying, I mean, you know, when you're going through, uh, you know, a, a project or, or I really like to say creating a business, right? You're, you have to pivot every week, right? I mean, the, the NFT space is just ever adapting and, and, you know, different directions and, you know, kind of, again, something that was popular or, or a great thing two days ago is not today. And that's just the way it is. And, you know, you're going to have a hundred revisions of the original plan that you had, and, and there's going to be 
a hundred more. And if you don't pay it to survive, sadly, it's just, you know, it's going to, it's going to slowly fade away and you're going to lose that kind of trust. You're going to lose that hype. You're going to use that kind of core community because there's just so many other projects that are popping out that are just, you know, eye catchers. Right. So you always, you always just have to be adapting. Yeah, this is exactly. And sorry, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to take anyone else, uh, uh, turn uh wolf yeah i just no, have one, good, one follow up yeah I, I have i have just one vo one follow up which is really important in a way the 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 thing that you, we have in here just temporarily kind of hype on specific projects and we've seen that and this has been proven that project without actually an actual utility it cannot survive even if they are the best kind of culture within the space so having the the pro providing and providing the utilities and the, and proven the business model for the project because at the end of the day the NFT project side PFP is purely if not 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 purely it's 80% about business future business uh, model that you are trying to implement it is it is between the uh, from the tokenomic side of it from the metaverse side of it it will survive not only within the culture, even though the culture is really important component of it. It's it's gonna survive based on the future business model that they're trying to implement. We see a lot of popular, you know, like uh, kind of like uh, give an example. What is the idea behind the not okay bear that it made nine million dollars of sales in twenty four hours? This is a BS. So it's it's kind of like temporary kind of hype. Which does it, which does not make a sustainable type of business uh, uh, investment if you are if you look at it as an individual who's trying to invest in, in a specific projects, and and this is the difference between like you know who's gonna survive it and who's gonna stay here in the future, when all the other kind of hype is gonna fade. Uh, because you know every every two every day there is a new project who looks so cool but you know the community as much as it is like you know active if there is no return on investment that is actually shown and proved and proven it's gonna fade by the time it might take a year or two years to get fade if they don't actually implement a business model or business plan for the future to be implemented and reward reward the NFT holders uh, based on their uh, initial investment in the project itself. So the, the, the entire idea, temporarily we see kind of like different phases up and down on the uh, 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 customer taste, if you look at it, who are the, uh, the uh, uh, NFT uh, buyers of the PFP. Uh, th th their taste is changing day, day by day based on a lot of fa different factors. The markets plays a huge uh, uh, input in that where you saw, like we've seen a lot of, of, of people going from ETH to Solana because Solana is much cheaper in a way. So it's it's a kind of like a concept, the market play factors, the influencers, the marketing, the web two big companies, the, the VCs, all of this plays the factors. But you want to look at it year, two years from now, who will be available, who will be there, who's like, which business model has been proven itself that it is sustainable and going to survive all these different fa uh, factors in a way. Oh, oh man, I took a lot of time. Sorry about that, guys. No, please. That was awesome. And I really appreciate the insight. And obviously you've you know been around the ringer. You've launched a project. You spent a lot of time in different circles. You've built a community before. So it's great to hear from someone with an experience like that. Uh, we do have a few more uh, faces that joined us. Zorfix, how's it going? Pretty good. How you doing? Living the dream, man. What's new? Oh, not much. I actually, I, I, I kind of lost track of time there and jumped in a little late here, but I appreciate you having us up here again. Absolutely. So we've been chatting. We've been, you know, pretty much everybody that's been on here has been a founder tonight, you know, of a project that has launched, um, you know, has sales, has been there. And so just kind of was talking with people a little bit about the tools in the background. Um, I think a nice little connection, you know, to a lot of what, you know, Wendman's doing right with your team, working with a lot of different founders to provide these tools in these backgrounds. So I think it's important for people to know what these, you know, tools are that are needed and where they can get them. Uh, that's the ideal path for me, I think, to the pipeline towards having a successful NFT project. Um, so yeah, we'd love to get your thoughts on that. If you want to talk a little bit about, you know, anything that you guys are working on, any uh, specific tools or any projects that you're excited for, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
here for the last few weeks we've been in, in wolf spaces we've been talking about some things but i mean just to give the brief brief background of windmint and then tell you about some of the newer stuff we've been working on uh you know we about a year ago we started you know basically for a long time before that i've been doing software engineering and was in silicon valley and uh, just did your stuff with accelerators and so last year right after that board eight launch uh, and saw the NFT space heating up i just felt like there was an opportunity to build essentially a, a sort of a technology powered accelerator in the space you know uh, one where there's actually sort of a software platform underneath the launch pad that automates a lot of the steps involved in launching an nft collection because i mean you know regardless of what kind of art you're doing or what kind of utility or whatever I mean, at the end of the day, you know, launching an NFT collection involves a lot of the same repetitive steps, which lends itself to automation, and which, which of course, reduces, you know, the potential for, for errors and problems and so on. And so we spent about the last year building, you know, a collection of smart contracts and optimizing them and developing what are called factories around them so that and tying those to a deployer app so that, you know, our clients can essentially, you know, just literally go to a deployer app, connect their wallet, you know, complete a multi-step form deploy their own contract. <clears throat> the contracts are parameterized and, and basically been through many battles and, you know, it's hyper, hyper gas optimized. I mean, not just in terms of like what standard we're using ERC 721A or whatever, but also in terms of, you know, the variables. I mean, like, you know, how much space are we reserving for variables and just all kinds of stuff. And so we've managed to build some extremely secure and super low gas contracts and, uh, and, and just, you know, for all the various kind of contracts that people want to deploy in the space, which includes the 721A, the ERC-1155, and the ERC-20 right now. And we also have a, a ERC-721R pattern that we're getting ready to deploy a factory for. And then on top of that, we've been you know, building a bunch of other tools, including a whitelist management tool that moves all the whitelist management off-chain so that you're leveraging Merkle trees. Uh, you know, It integrates with Discord, makes it really easy to collect wallet addresses. We have an airdrop tool uh, and just a lot of other stuff. Uh, and uh, we're actually combining all that into a sort of our flagship product that we've been working on for a long time called Winmint Studio which you'll see us announce here in the next few weeks. And basically people, you know, founders can just go to winmint.com, connect their wallet, log into Winmint Studio, and essentially have access to all these standalone tools that we've been building for about the last year. And uh, <clears throat> so I think we're, we're at like, I think number 55 or something, 56, I believe, I think we got minted today in terms of, you know, projects that we've either already launched or are in the process of launching. And over the last, you know, month or so, we've been moving into what we like to call verticalization, where we're starting to focus on certain verticals, especially music. So we have a music product coming. And working with some musicians, which I mean, some of you guys already know Sammy and Violetta and a few other, a few other them, and uh, and we've also landed some deals with some some pretty high profile athletes, including uh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's Click Click, uh, you know, basically he has, uh, you know, he's he's working together with Click to do some cannabis uh, products, including a, 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 a basically an oral cannabis uh, like a spray, and uh, just a bunch of other cannabis products. We, we sort of landed that deal this weekend, and we're doing the Click Pass for uh, hit that project. And also landed a you know the uh, development engineering deal with uh, Eric Ebron at Balloon Town, and uh, and we're doing a bunch of work around uh, Juju Smith's upcoming launch, which is uh, Block bo Block Bots, I believe, and uh, and so yeah, we just been just been cranking hard and you know just trying to you know push our way into working into some of these verticals and you know working with higher profile uh, you know clients, which again I mean we work with every client whether whether it's high profile or not the same way, but but. Uh, yeah, I just think there's a lot of professional athletes and musicians and so on that are trying to break into the space and get their head wrapped around everything. And a large part of what we do is also mentorship. So there's a huge mentorship element with some of these, uh, you know, with all these projects. But that's a little, in a nutshell, kind of what we do. Yeah, it's very impressive, you know, what you've been able to build in really not that long. When did you guys start? It's been right on a year now, I believe. And, uh, you know, we kind of started off with like a bootstrap model where initially it was really we were doing the first three to four projects. I mean, literally by hand. I mean, just like most dev shops these days will do it. You know, they'll build a minting form and build the contract and everything one by one. <clears throat> and after we did the first three or four projects, we just started kind of combining it all into reusable code patterns and templates and you know, hosted minting form that supports branding and custom DNS. And same thing with like a DNS aware metadata API that protects metadata against leaks. You know, before you sell out. And uh, but yeah, it's been about a been right on a year now. I think we're on our one year birthday. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So for everybody in the audience, I mean, you can hear there's an expansive lineup of tools here that are available for people that are looking to branch out. And even if, you know, you've worked on one item, perhaps you're looking to move into a different area. Also just a great networking opportunity. I definitely recommend if you're interested in, you know, NFTs and perhaps building using one of these tools, uh, go ahead and DM or just, you know, follow NFT Drew, Quigley, Zorf that are up here. We also usually have Iker up here also as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, these guys love to connect. They love to chat. They also have a great amount of connections. I mean, they just talked about that they're working with Mike Tyson, Eric Ebron, Juju Smith-Schuster. 
And I know they're working with a bunch of other names and a lot of the people that are up here. Um, so yeah, shout out women for, you know, supporting this space and a lot, uh, you know, if you're a founder, might as well make your life easy. It's not like, you know, you don't, you don't go try to build a house without, you know, the right tools or anything like that. That's what this is at the end of the day. And it's a business. All right. We got more faces up here. Um, so Blake, I want to go to you first and kind of get a little bit more on the founder side. And then I also want to bring in Kenobi and Slava as well. Yeah. What's going on Zorpheus and, uh, the rest of everybody up here. Great, uh, great work, man. I've, I've seen you guys come, uh, sure. you know, a long way and just, a just a few short, uh, months of knowing you guys. Were you going to say something quickly? Oh, I just said, yo. <laughs> What's up, man? Yeah. No, I just wanted to build on a little bit of what Abbas and Ashley had to say. Uh, you know, I think whenever you start off with, you know, this, this concept of launching an NFT project, uh, it's very important to think of it from all sides and all angles. And, uh, you know, like Ashley had said, you know, you need to be able to, uh, you know, adapt to changing markets and changing market environments and understanding really what that market is demanding. And, uh, you know, that takes a little bit of, of research and knowledge on your end, just, just being in the trenches, you know, being in the discords, being on Twitter, uh, you know, interacting with people through DMs, you know, that's really how you're going to gather that information. And, you know, getting to idea to the starting line, you know, what the Win Mint team can help you do uh, is, is crucial, right? I mean, that's, that's what I think most, you know, founders try to focus on when they first start out. Um, but I think that that's the wrong way to, to go about it. I think you need to begin with the end in mind. And so what Abbas was talking about is creating that culture. And for, for us of Diamond Tans, if you go and look at our collection, uh, you know, our floor price isn't great. And, you know, I'll be the first to tell you, but we're continuing to build and we've had to, to, to innovate. And uh, if you look at, you know, how many actually Diamond Tans are actually listed for sale, um, we're pushing Moonbird numbers, right? And we've, we've got a pretty large collection. And so that goes to show like that culture of Diamond Tanding and, and having the people in our community uh, believe in what we're building. Uh, so, I, you know, I think it's very important to to begin with the end in mind and understand that, hey, getting to the starting line and, you know, the gun going off and now you're running the race, that's just the beginning. That's just the start of the race. Uh, so make sure that you're, you know, thinking about the long term and thinking about what you're trying to build, uh, because the reality of it is, you know, if you're going to put it together a project uh, you know, you have a responsibility to that community and to the people that, you know, have, have backed you up. And so, yeah, I think, you know, make sure that you're considering the fact that, Hey, just after we launch, that's not the end of it. Really after you launch, that's the beginning of it. Uh, and just have that mindset moving forward. And then also, you know, to thinking of, you know, how you're going to build the community is really, really important. And, uh, you know, Ashley's, you know, been, been really solid with that, with her, uh, with her communities and um yeah you know we're we're happy to help you guys out as well you know i've we've you know launched a diamond hands and you know we've got great collectors like von mises and pranksky and mev collector and d's and uh you know that that's just from you know the network and uh people recognizing that uh you know diamond tans is is a solid you know collection and the people that back that up that's that social proof so yeah i think you know the culture is definitely a big factor when, when thinking about launching a product, um, but also begin with the end in mind and understanding that once you launch, that's not the end of it. That's the beginning. Great points, thinking with the end in mind and kind of reversing. And, and it's very difficult for people to think of the end in mind when they don't have the right mentorship, right? And the right people telling them what that end should look like and where you know they're going. It's a very difficult journey to take alone, but you know a lot of the people up here did it, right? They started out very, very early on and didn't really know what that journey looked like and have been along it. And we can look at the market as well and say, hey, there's a gold rush period. There's a consolidation period. You know, and where does it go next? Where's the next wave? So I want to pause for one second. Zorfix, I see we've got uh, Eric Ebron in the crowd. Yes. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, and Eric and Seal, if y'all want to hop up here, man, we'd love to love to have you guys uh, kind of share some alpha on Eric on your journey so far with Blown Town and Seal, all the, all the crazy stuff you've been involved in. Absolutely. So invite is open. Um, if y'all want to request, I think it'll bring you up. If you have any problems, uh, you need to just 
maybe it'll just pop out for a second. There we go. We got a wave. So yeah, invites there. If you have any problems joining, just feel free to. Oh, there you go. Sorry, Zerfix. I was getting some wind back. So you just. I don't know where Eric, what's going on, man? What's up, bro? Appreciate you coming into the space. We were chatting a little bit earlier uh, with Zorfix about the project and what you guys are working on. It's great to have you here to hear first person. Okay, dope, dope. Y'all were chilling my project. That's cool. I hope it was. That, that's what we did. <laughs> that's that's dope. But uh, yeah, man, we we're creating a uh, balloon town, um, and it's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be pretty dope. I mean. I was just telling my homeboy this. I did a podcast with my guy, John Henson. And I was like, bro, I hate shit on a project because it's, it's like so hard. You like, you, you feel like you're the only one that gets excited and everyone else is like, okay, when's your project? But it's like, we, we're creating something that's going to be really, really cool. And I'll just tell you like a quick, what I say is my Spark Notes version. Um, Balloon Town's created. Um, it's going to be a pretty pretty significant journey i think it's gonna be so dope um but the story is um these vibrant very cool very um i say swaggy i'm 29 years old i'm very in today's time but those swaggy as in traits um they're very um they're very now they're very cool uh balloon animals and the reason why we're inspired to do balloon animals is because of jeffrey coons's uh sculptures that he creates um and we also got inspiration from cause which is a big chinese brand um or i just say asian brand uh don't want to direct anything so a big asian brand and uh they they inspired our artists and our artist is Ian. And basically we created Balloon Town, which is these balloon animals that live within Balloon Town and they eventually get captured by what is cyber bully bots. And cyber bully bots are basically this day and age is, you know, cyber bullies or negative Nancy's or whatever you want to call them. Karen's no, I'm just playing, but whatever you want to call them. Um, and, the cyber bully bots capture these and then the balloon bear, which is our project that we're 95% done with right now, um, will be the first released um, animal. And by it being released, that one will be the first one to break out of the prison or cyber zoo. And the cyber zoo uh, will hold the rest of the balloon animals. And the balloon bear's objective is to free the other animals from the cyber zoo and one of the ways we'll use uh, a tote like a, a a way for the balloon bear to do it will be uh with helium so if you get helium um these are just some of the things again this is spark no version just trying to You're giving it too much away yeah. let, let, let so, some, uh, if you get if you get helium you know that will allow you to <laughs> uplift the next animal for free man and you know the community will get to choose what animal they want to release and um it will be it will be an intense journey we just um we're just signing an agreement here pretty soon with a, a comic book company to to try to illustrate the um, the breakout of the next release animal. So that will come um, during the second release of the animal. And um, yeah, we're just trying to do uh, trying to create something dope, man. Like uh, shit, I don't have nothing to hide. I know it's a lot of things going on in the NFT space right now, but I don't have nothing to hide. I'm financially very stable. Ian, our artist been drawn since he was 16 he's built some he's got these guys building these insane sculptures that we were hoping to try to push to the christie's market i got a guy that can hopefully get us there but you know we have to create this product that's literally going to be one of one so we're in the process of that man we're in the process of so many things and ultimately we just want people to get back to living free, living fun, living vibrant, having fun. And that's what balloon time is about. So yeah, sorry. I, I, I spark notes, man. It's, it's a lot more, but yeah. Hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys like the story. Yeah, no, yeah. no, that's, that was awesome. And, and, um, Eric, just to, just to kind of ask you a question, cause I think like a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, the people that, that we talk to from Winmint as well is like, you know, if y'all join the balloon town discord, I mean, Eric is in there. Right. And you could tell, like, you know, this is his passion and he has a lot of time to kind of bond with the community and, and kind of build that community or game. kind of what, what Abbas is saying. And, and Eric, I, I kind of just want to, you know, I'll put you on the spot here a little bit. Uh, you know, like how does how does utilizing Winmint, right, allow you to kind of focus on that? Right. Because, you know, we kind of handle the engineering and just to kind of hear your perspective of that. 
Yeah, it was uh it's what you call a weight lifted off your shoulders. Honestly, um me and Ian, bro, honestly, we're toe to toe with the project. Like, um we've shit, I got us some necklaces made. It was very expensive just because I know we put, you know, we're in this together and I I just wanted to extend a token of gratitude to him for being an artist. Um and it's 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 so important to build a team that is going to be, you know, trustworthy, that understands, like, my thing with him is, like, marketing. That's my biggest thing right now. And I tell him, like, I'm, I'm, I'm really picky on how to market because I don't want our project to just be the first thing you see when you pop, turn on your Twitter because they're like, oh, they're just paying for marketing. I want it to be the way that we are. And we're not pushy. We really don't we're really not in people's faces. We're more laid back. We're more chill. We're more fun. We're more enjoyable. And that's the way we want to market ourselves. So instead of like pouring money into that and, you know, trying to just financially build a community that's not uh, understanding of your goals and your promises, then there's no point of really creating a project. So that's kind of what we're doing. And with WinMint, it allows us to just focus on that part of the journey, just building up the community because we don't have to worry about the the releases and the stuff like that. We, we turn in our art, get them to understand how we want things to go down, come up with a game plan and let them take it from there. So that's what we're excited about. Um, I bought that expensive ass pass, so hopefully. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's go, and you know, just to kind of tie in this uh, this this conversation, you know, what what Eric and Ian have, have been building and their whole team, um, you know, you just heard him explain it in a way that's a story. Okay, if you want to know how to launch an NFT project, start with the story, and that kind of that kind of supports what Abbas was talking about, what Blake was mentioning. I mean, if you're out there and you're looking at starting an NFT project, focus on the end. You're going to build a brand. It's the IP, right? It's the product that, that people are going to... He started getting into some of that story, and, and, and that's what people are going to really, really gravitate towards. Um, you know, when you're trying to build a community and you're trying to get people involved, I mean, that's it. That's the, that's the, that's the biggest, I mean, in my opinion, my humble opinion, that's the biggest first step. You gotta, you gotta get out the door. You're, you gotta tell people what you're doing. So, I mean, uh, that's why I'm super excited to work with Eric. I mean, uh, this is going to be an awesome project, but, um, yeah, man, it's, I'm excited. Love it, Craig. Uh, yeah, Eric, this is great. I'm looking at the website. Actually, I have it pulled up right now for anybody that wants to follow along. It's just balloontown.io. Oh, ignore our website. I know. I know oh, it looks no. good. I know it looks, it looks good, but we have so much we want to change. Like, it looks good. Not going to lie. Like, we're, we're, we're not half-assing anything, but these diagrams we, we, are sick. We, we, we want to put a fact page up. We want you guys to know who Ian is. We want to put some of his hand painted artwork up there. We want um, to to show some of the things that he's done. This dude sold paintings for over forty thousand dollars. He's not. He's. It's not. It. It. He's a tattoo artist who's built his name up into being one of the best tattoo artists because of his artwork. And then he got into painting um, because he's been friggin' graffiti artist since he was 16, airbrushing since he was friggin' 16. And honestly, the website is created by him and he learned how to do it just through YouTube. So all of the art on the website is all him. That's how creative he is. Um, but it's he knows it's not what we want. We know it's not what we want but we wanted to give people what we had because that's all we have to offer. You know what I'm saying? So we we're doing everything we can in our power to create something that's good. And the more people that join us and cre help us create this superpower, the more we'll, you know, we'll offer and stuff like that. And I think that's essentially how you build an NFT project, honestly. Yeah. I'm actually going through, I went through his, uh, his Instagram as well. Uh, his art is insane. I mean, he's got 80,000 plus on Instagram here. Uh, for a tattoo page, which I think it shows goes to show, and I can see he got Rick Ross uh, tattooed. Yeah, he went on he went on tour with uh, Rick Ross and tattooed him his whole tour. Him, Meek Mill, a couple other guys. So he's well known, bro. But again, like you know, that's why we got to create the fact page so people understand that you know we ain't no need. We're not hiding from anything. We really want to just create a dope project. Absolutely. So, Eric, I'm sure you get the question often when people ask, you know, nowadays everyone wants to ask, what's the utility? What's your answer? 
Uh, longevity in our utility is is everything. Um, we plan on building a balloon town mansion. Um, I'm supposed to be opening up a restaurant with one of my Bitcoin uh, miner friends up in New York, and also moving it down to Houston where I live. And a lot of that will be des- a lot of that will be designed in Balloon Town. Um, we have just so many resources. We're trying to get a Lamborghini in Miami that's rented out in Balloon Town. We're going to design it all Balloon Town. Um, we're trying to find a wall down in Miami as well for Ian to paint um, Balloon Town. Um, the house doc will be painted balloons so it's a lot of things balloon town that will be balloon town and we also created what is called currency creators under llc because we eventually want to make balloon town something bigger than what it is so um it's a lot man it's a lot we have a game plan and we just want to continue to stick with it to push it so that's the ultimate utility is the resources that we have because we have an unlimited amount of resources and can make anything happen. So. Perfect. I love it, man. I'm excited to see what this uh, turns into. Uh, I know we plan on definitely doing more spaces uh, with the women team. So I'm sure we'll have yourself on, you know, people like uh, Juju, Mike Tyson, excited for what's coming. For sure. Yeah, man. It'd be dope. Perfect. We're ready. Wait. We're ready. <laughs> There we go. Blake, did you have a question? I saw your hand up earlier. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Eric, uh, do you do you mess with uh, Dez at all in the NFL space? I know he's a pretty... pretty yeah, we hosted NFL. a space. Uh, if, if, if you go to... Yeah, if you go to our Discord, man, I, I got all of them together. It was me, Juju, Dez, uh, Cameron, Jordan, and these are just a few players that I know that are NFT players. Uh, uh, people, I, I found out Deshaun Kaiser was. He followed me the other day. So I mean, I network in the NFL space is getting there. Um, it's probably a lot of people that do it undercover, like and don't really want their shit out there because there are a lot of scammers. So um, yeah, I'm just trying to uh, branch off as much as I can and get a lot of people to understand it. But yeah, I, I had a space with Dez. If you want to go to our Discord and check it out, it's labeled under our AMAs. We keep track of every one of our AMAs because we look at it as 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 Bible text, we look at it as we're the first ones here. We're creating something that's that's new. Um, we're creating something that eventually be old, and we we want to be the first scripts for um, Balloon Town. So we keep all of our AMAs for when we talk about it. No, that's awesome, man. I'm gonna hop in your guys' Discord. I'm a uh, I'm gonna join jump in. There. We we gotta get um, Eric. Have you connected with Laramie Tunsil at all about NFTs? Laramie Tunsil, the uh, tackle. Yeah. No, 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 no. He does it too. I didn't know that. Yeah. So he actually, I don't know if you remember this, but when he got drafted back in, I believe it was like 2015, 2017 area, he was supposed to actually go to my Baltimore Ravens. But then right before draft night, the video came out of him hitting the gas mask bong. Yeah. And, and I bet you if it was now, it wouldn't even be a problem. But wow. Yeah. Yeah. But it was huge at the time, right? It was huge. And so he, bro. he slid all the way to 13 to Miami. Yeah. And it was also, so he came on, he actually basically did a thing where a couple of weeks ago, he NFT'd the video of him hitting the bong and then sold it and donated that money to charity. So I uh, did a live dope. space. Yeah, we did a live space during the That's bidding. Uh, yeah, with Laramie. And he was like so transparent <laughs> about just like what it felt like at the time and everything and how much stuff has changed. So for sure, maybe uh, we can get a, get a connection going there. Yeah, that definitely. That'd be dope. I like that. I like that he did that too. That was pretty sweet. Way to turn a negative into a positive, right? One hundred percent. I think that's what everybody in this area is all about. Um, perfect. Okay. Well, hey, if everybody, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep um, also bringing some more into this. But if anybody else has any questions, oh, Eric. Yeah. I, no, I was just stopping in, man. I'm about to jump off and help my wife with this, this newborn. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to you guys. Perfect. Thank well, appreciate you, you stopping you. in. See you. Thank you, man. Take care. Eric. All right. That was fun. Uh, let's keep it going here, too, because we've got a couple more founders I want to hear from. Uh, Kenobi, appreciate you popping in. We're getting close to Metaverse Miami here. Uh, would love to hear a couple couple minute update from you on what's been going on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, just uh, just got back from being out of town on, on some stuff, so getting getting all caught up. But the work never stops, as you guys know. Um, 
Yeah, we just announced a couple more speakers, and so we're uh, we're really excited for August. I mean, everyone's going, or not everyone, but a lot of people going to VCon right now, and that's super exciting to see the timeline kind of showing that. And, um, you know, then we'll have NFT NYC and then Metaverse Miami in early August. Um, but, you know, in the, in the context of this conversation, um, besides me just, like, summarizing what I'm working on, do you have, like, sort of i've only been listening for a minute so do you want to yeah. talk about it specifically or yeah so the overall topic and what we've been chatting about and shout out board i see you in the crowd too another speaker i believe at metaverse miami um the overall topic has been talking about tools for launching an nft project tonight and blake summed it up really well he basically said when you're launching this project you have to kind of work your way back from the end right it's it's understand what the end vision is and work your way back but it's very difficult for people to know what that end vision is without hearing from other people who have been there. And one of the things that's really important to kind of get to that end point is all the tools that go into it, right? Because there's different items that you need and part of it's a team, but part of it's certain assets. And we're kind of, you know, we're doing this space in collaboration with the Wedman team, Quigley, Drew, Iker, and Zorpheus are up here, right? Because they're a company that really embodies this, right? And builds these tools and helps people assist. So kind of in tying it in with that, because uh, we don't just want to tell people, you know, what they need. We also want to, like, tell them where they can get it. Um, and, yeah, and then we just had Eric Ebron come on, who uh, is doing a project with the women team. Or, you know, we're doing some spaces together as well. And chat a little bit about Balloon Town, which is what he's working on. So maybe if you want to talk at all about the tools or perhaps the tools that it was, you know, took to use to um, basically create this uh, NFT pass that's working for a... Metaverse Miami experience. Um, you can talk about that. And then also yeah. I just want to give a note to before you go to the women team and to Kenobi to everyone, we have about 10 minutes left. And then we are going to be starting at 5 p.m. Uh, PST Sharp, uh, a VC space. So I just want to put that out there. But yeah, all you can Okay, do. right on. I'll, I'll be I'll be try to I'll be succinct. Um, yeah, so so the the way Metaverse Miami is utilizing blockchain is we're uh, kind of a Web3 native Metaverse and NFT innovation conference. And our ticketing is 100% uh, NFTs, it's all on chain. So the way we're doing things a little differently is by, we have a 3,600 piece collection of Genesis passes, and those are the only tickets we're ever going to sell. So you own your pass, it gets you in perpetually. And we're also building a rental pool that will let you rent, um, your access any, any year that you can't go to one of our events, you can just rent it out peer to peer to someone else. So trying to create some long-term value that way. And so um, I love seeing these these projects pop up where they're building tools for creators like Winmet. So that's exciting. Um, we, you know, built out our own uh, with our own team. We're building out our own contracts and platform um, for this. But it's it's it feels like we're getting to the place where NFTs are starting to to push into going beyond PFPs and one of our one on one art and photography and whatnot and really start to try and explore and utilize um, blockchain technology in new ways that can broaden the reach to you know people beyond uh, collectibles. And so we're the tools we utilized, you know, we we did our own dev work. Um, but you know it's not just development, it's also marketing and all that. And so we are firm believers in kind of grassroots, organic community building and marketing. Um, Blake, I, I see your hand up. What's up, man? Yeah, I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Um, sure. Are you able to verify at these conferences? And if so, how are you doing that? Yeah, so what we're doing is we actually, we partnered with um, Last Slice Collective and we're building an app that is going to be able to verify uh, right at the event, at the point of entry. So, and beyond just access, right? So it's token gated access. You'll have to have your, your token in a hot wallet. Um, but then you can also do things like, you know, build out and verify when you get a swag bag. If you attend different things, you can start really leveraging the ability to check the tokenomics. You can cross promote hosted parties where you have to have two different NFTs in your wallet to attend a party and then you get in and the party's paid for and stuff like that. So all of that is stuff we're really leaning into for this event. That's awesome, man. I love to hear that. I love to see the innovation in the space because, you know, like you, I, I do think we're on that elbow curve of the exponential growth phase for blockchain and NFTs. So yeah, I think uh, you're on the right track, man. Love to hear it.
Man, really, really appreciate that. Yeah, the the mint is live. You know, we're we're doing our thing in the events in August, and it's at the Hard Rock, so we're really excited about that. Um, and we also randomized the VIP passes into the mint because we didn't want to sell our VIP passes for a different price, just to kind of give back to the community. So, you know, we're minting our tickets for the price of what you normally pay to attend a conference once, and it gets you in perpetually. So we're we're hoping that the community, uh, you know, supports and that this approach resonates. And we've got a fire lineup of speakers, so we're really excited. Perfect. Kenobi, have you heard at all about the After Party NFT? About After Party NFT? Yeah. Um, no, I haven't. They're doing um, some interesting, like, ticketed your in real life events. Um, I went to actually uh, a, a thing that they had here in Hollywood uh, this week. Um, I, I might, I might, you might be a good connection to have uh, along with what you're doing. I think because they're really progressing down like a similar path. Nice, actually, I think I did see this on the timeline, but it was, I, I, it was a little, little bit ago. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm going to dig back into it again. Appreciate that. Perfect. Okay. All right. We got about five minutes here, so I'm just uh, Slava. You, you haven't waited patiently, so I'm just going to give you like a minute and a half if possible because I do want to give the women's team some rapid time here too. But appreciate you coming up and being here with us, and want to throw you. Uh, opportunity to comment. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I I wanted to share a quick insight that um, I had recently while answering one of my clients' question, which was, how can an NFT project today uh, incentivize their community users to uh, jump in, contribute, um, give value, but not through capital, but instead through their time? And the insight was that uh, there is a new type of NFT being developed. It was originally formulated by Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, for those who don't know, back in January. And he de described it as a soul-bound NFT. It recently uh, kind of took hold in the community and um, it's been also named as account-bound NFT. Uh, the uh, token standard at the moment is, I believe, ERC-4973. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um, anyway, so the, the goal of this type of NFT is to convince people that they should do something to obtain a token. Once they obtain the token, they cannot transfer it. In other words, soul-bound NFT is essentially a non-transferable NFT. Now, you might ask, why is that useful? Well, in the context of you know somebody in the community doing some positive behavior, they still obtain a token but now they feel like it was meant for them and them only. I thought I'd share that inside there. Perfect. Appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, we, any, any insights we can get into getting people involved, I will always take. Um, absolutely. Okay, so we have about three minutes left here, and then we are going to have a full panel of some incredible, incredible uh, uh, venture capitalists who are coming up here, as well as some people who kind of, you know, around the venture capital area, and they're going to be talking with us, and I'll be leading that with VC Braggs, you can see up here with us. So that's coming up in just three minutes. Um, for right now, I just want to hit the women team, see if there's anything else that they want to add on to this one. Uh, Zerfix? No, just uh, again, man, appreciate you having us, and uh, appreciate everybody who's been up here uh, sharing sharing insights, and uh, look forward to meet, connecting with everybody soon again. Love it. Awesome. Okay. Uh, Iker, you didn't really get a chance to speak. I'm sorry about that, but anything you want to say here, wrap up with women? Uh, no, no, no worries. That That's partly my fault. Cause you know, the grind never stops. So I was the one coming in late, so that's okay. Um, but with uh, what I was able to hear from the conversation, it's always, it's always strong, strong points. And I love these connections that everybody is able to make while we're, while we're here. And, uh, yeah, check out balloon town. It's going to be a fun time. And, uh, you know, that shameless plug, if you're looking to launch yourself uh, an NFT project, I know a guy that can help. Check out Winman. Perfect. Okay. And I see we have a blind coming in, and I'm going to start bringing up speakers for the next phase two. Uh, we're going to start the one 5 p.m. ESD sharp. Drew, anything else you want to add on this one? No, I just want to say thanks again for having us. And, uh, you know, if anyone is thinking about, um, you know, launching a project and you don't know where to start, or even if you are launching a project and you already have a developer, uh, you know, there's other ways that we can go ahead and, and, you know, help out, assist, and, you know, make sure you launch in the most possible, secure, efficient manner uh, to make sure that, you know, you are as successful as you can be and to go ahead and, and you know, um, kind of set that path for your community. 
to go ahead and grow stronger and, um, you know, really just hopefully set a precedence in this space because that's that's severely needed at the moment. Perfect. Thank you, Drew and Quig. Oh, hey, man, just just thanks again for having us and, uh, you know, looking forward to our next conversation. My DMs are open if anyone, you know, wants to talk about their project, hit me up. Um, other than that, man, hope everyone has a great night. Absolutely. Okay, so everybody in the audience, please take a second and check out our speakers. Also, big thank you to Kenobi, Ashley, Blake, and Abbas for being uh, speakers on this. We really appreciate you all. This was awesome. Uh, we'll be back with Limit next week. We are going to have on more speakers. Uh, we talked about, you know, we had Eric on tonight, but we'll probably be having on Juju Smith-Schuster, Mike Tyson, and others. So plenty to look into. I'm going to go ahead and change the title on this now. I'm going to rotate through. Make sure you're giving everyone a follow, especially if you related to anything with them. These are also very giving people. DMs are open, I believe, for everybody. Go ahead, check out the DMs, hop in, talk with them. All right, it is now 5 p.m. PST, pretty much. So we're going to rotate into our next one, which is going to be all about venture capital. So VC Braggs, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, thanks for hosting this, Wolf. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. Let's go ahead and get more up here. Oh, got some uh, feedback there. I see Blind is in here. Um, I see Eric is in here. I'm shooting out the invites. Hopefully these work.